how can we work toward reducing the cost of green hydrogen which is which uses a lot of renewable energy to produce and then how do we really work on the distribution of uh, hydrogen now i can understand that it may not happen now or in near term but then can we start thinking about it now so that you know we slowly transition over welcome to sustainability karma i am your host nana gautam and today we have with us a very special guest nitin jirafe he is the managing director of tata cummins and he is also head of engine business at cummins india welcome nitin thank you nana and thanks for having me here today so you have taken over as the managing director at a very interesting point during energy transition what are your plans well i think these are really interesting time for uh, the the commercial uh, industry and we are going through uh, this phase of transition as far as the energy is concerned i mean so so far we were reliant on diesel as the main source of energy and fuel but now we have various options and as as a cummins we are very excited to be a part of this uh, revolution and uh, specifically uh, if you talk about uh, cummins india we are committed to decarbonization journey and and at at the overall cummins level we have this target of being carbon neutral by 2050 and india is a big uh, part of that journey now what we are doing here in india is uh, you know we are working on various new technologies you know to begin with let's say lng which is a very promising and here and now kind of uh, fuel technology we already have engine which is uh, proven uh, on this technology which is offering a very uh, similar performance to as of diesel and and the vehicles are all already out and they are performing really well the next in line is the hydrogen which we are very very optimistic about because i think the hydrogen is the technology of the future and and we are in advanced stage uh, of uh, let's say uh, producing uh, this uh, hydrogen engine in the same plant will not only be producing the hydrogen engines but will also be producing some of the other technologies like uh this hydrogen tank type 4 for storage of hydrogen then the pks which is a integrated system for uh, uh let's say running the uh, electric uh, buses and 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 so forth so overall we are trying to be uh, let's say ahead of the curve when it comes to energy transition uh, however we know that Uh, the next uh, five to ten years are going to be very critical uh, for throwing out those technologies and really commercializing it, so that you know the customers can get benefit out of it in terms of the total cost of ownership. So, how is Tata Cummins helping India achieve its net zero target? As I said uh, earlier, I think uh, Tata Cummins is and the Cummins overall is uh, committed to decarbonization and, and globally. we are investing uh, quite a lot of uh, money in in this new uh, new technologies uh, for example uh, let's say the hydrogen uh, internal combustion engine you know we have invested uh, hundreds of million dollar in this technology and to ensure that this technology offers the similar benefit as of the diesel engine in terms of power and torque etc now we have already started producing this engines in our jamshedpur plant now to support that we are also uh, localizing the type 4 hydrogen tanks and we are we are setting up uh, the the plant uh, in the same facility as of where we are producing this hydrogen engines and then we are working on uh, let's say uh, the technologies like pcas which will offer us a very integrated solution to manage the overall battery management system in in the four wheelers uh, i mean especially uh, so in buses uh, so we are committed to this decarbonization journey for india we are aligned with thought process uh, and policies of the government and and we are working very closely with our customers to ensure that we bring these technologies uh in reality so what is your outlook for sustainable mobility landscape in the year 2025 well i think the 2025 uh, i'm looking at 2025 as a pivotal year in terms of proving some of these technologies for example let's say lng lng if you really look at the landscape of lng we are still working on uh, setting up fuel stations across india 
and the next technology as uh, hydrogen which is uh, you know very aligned to what the government is thinking in terms of uh, the energy independence or let's say uh, you know taking a leap uh, into future then we we are working on the hydrogen internal combustion engine as i said earlier okay those in all uh, with the help of government various government initiatives like mnre now these technologies will be proven in 2025 okay and uh, then i think uh, we'll slowly transition into uh, these new technologies you mentioned that we lack speed what do you think what are the reasons that we lack speed well well i think see if you really look at the commercial uh, industry heavy commercial and medium commercial vehicle industry i think uh, eco becomes very important for the end customers okay i mean it's a, like a asset that the customers would like to sweat okay it's like a airline industry where you know the airline has the airplane has to be in there all the time that's why it makes money right now uh, it's important that these technologies offer certain advantages to the customer in terms of total cost of ownership and they are able to make profit so uh, the the parity between the diesel as in fuel and lng as in fuel you know there has to be a significant gap okay so that customers get the advantage today the gap is let's say 10% and that's where i think we we'll have to continuously work toward how how can we widen this gap and make lng as more affordable and and that will definitely uh, let's say encourage a lot of entrepreneurs uh, to set up a a dispensing station what kind of breakthrough solutions are you looking to see in the end to end sustainability mobility ecosystem well i think uh, if you really look at the breakthrough solutions then i would say that the success of some of these new technologies or new fuel is largely driven by how quickly and and what scale they get adopted and and for them to get adopted again as i said the tco the total cost of ownership has to make sense now uh, there are two areas where i think one is here and now which is as i said lng which offers uh, a low carbon uh, solution gg and and that's where i think uh, we have to see that how do we maintain the gap between the diesel and the lng to a to to a level where it becomes more attractive and then how do we set up the infrastructure and the next one is the hydrogen and there also i think what is going to be important that how do we really continuously work toward reducing the cost of hydrogen and uh, let's say today the gray hydrogen and the the green hydrogen you know the cost difference cost delta is pretty significant okay now how can we work toward reducing the cost of green hydrogen which is which uses a lot of renewable energy to produce and then how do we really work on the distribution of uh, hydrogen now i can understand that it may not happen now or in near term but then can we start thinking about it now so that you know we slowly transition over a period of next 5 to 10 years towards uh the, the transmission of hydrogen the way we trans- do the transmission of uh, uh let's say diesel and that's going to be a big breakthrough and then how do we ensure that we have the the dispensing station across india so what are the main challenges in realizing the potential of using green hydrogen in medium and heavy commercial vehicles the main challenge of green hydrogen adaptability in commercial vehicle today is first uh, the technology has to be proven in in a commercial setup okay and that's that's happening right now under the mnre project and the second big challenge is going to be the distribution okay how the the availability of hydrogen uh, becomes easy across uh, all the the major uh, freight corridors and the cost ratio so what are your expectations from the budget about sustainable mobility landscape my expectation uh, from uh, the budget would be that it really enables some of these new technologies to pace in terms of implementation 
okay and and really uh, assist some of the uh, uh, businesses to continue to invest in this technology if this technology has to be adopted at a mass scale they needs to be affordable and that's where i think the budget can really bring in uh, some help to ensure that uh, we march towards uh, commercial and mass adoption of these technologies may it be lng may it may be hydrogen thank you nitin for such an insightful conversations this is naina watham signing off for sustainability karma thank you naina we hope you like this program this program is also live streamed on all india radio we look forward to your feedback on our whatsapp number 9818120554 For participation in this program write to us at sustainability.karma@gmail.com You may also connect with us on social media This podcast is also available on podcast hosting sites Looking forward to meet you again at the same time next week with a new episode and a new guest Till then goodbye from all of us Sustainability Karma A podcast series on sustainable development sustainability and esg